We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. AEW Unrestricted. It's Will Washington along with Aubrey Edwards. And you know what time it is. If you're watching this show or listening to the show, you know that it's pay-per-view time. It's one of the most exciting times in AEW, and we're talking about AEW Double or Nothing. I love the shirt, by the way, Aubrey. You like it? You like it? Yeah. It's my little Double or Nothing shirt from last year. Thanks, merch team. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that is a super fire shirt. I always love that shirt. And of course, Double or Nothing is going to be available on pay-per-view. It's available on uh, Bleacher Report. It's available on traditional pay-per-view. It's going to be available on ppv.com. It's going to be available on Trill it's available on youtube pay-per-views for AEW are widely available but if you're going to be in the las vegas area make sure you grab a ticket aewtix.com is the place to grab your tickets for double or nothing we got such an exciting card we got 10 matches this is going to be an incredible show one of the matches that we're going to be talking about right here right now is going to be for the AEW international championship in which will osprey the number one contender for the international championship will be challenging our our first guest here on AEW Unrestricted. He is the reigning and defending AEW International Champion. It's Mr. Roderick Strong. Yeah, buddy. Woo! I'll applaud myself now. <laughs> yes, nice glasses, sir. Oh, thank you. Emergency Amazon purchase, you know. Oh, I've been there before. I've been there before. Yes. So this weekend, you have a match with Will Ospreay. You guys have a little bit of history. How do you feel going into this match? I feel great. I feel ready. This is the perfect time for this match to happen. You know, this is something that I need personally, but also I think Will does as well. So because of the magnitude of this pay-per-view and all the eyes that will be on it, I think it's a great opportunity to show the world once again exactly who I am and remind everybody. Because I think sometimes they forget the bigger the stage, the better the opportunity for me. And you're no stranger to reminding people because it was literally at just the last pay-per-view at AEW Dynasty. Uh, you reminded the world of who you are by defeating Orange Cassidy, who is really synonymous with that belt. You know, he he had it nearly a year in his first reign, had two reigns with it. Talk a little bit about how uh, how it's been holding that championship and, and having essentially the responsibility of being a champion here in AEW. I want to say it's an honor, but obviously... Um seems strange to say but it, it honestly is like this is the title that immediately when it came about that that was something i've had my eye on even when i wasn't with the company so to have the opportunity to face someone like orange cassidy as talented as he is like kind of surreal at the moment and it was i was actually i did a show yesterday and, and people were were talking to me about that just how amazing that pay-per-view was overall and just the fact that it was a spotlight opportunity and you know i took advantage of it so it, it was awesome obviously will osprey came to aew had his first match as an aew talent at revolution and every match he's put on has been stellar match of the year candidates this is obviously very big stakes like you're an incredible wrestler you have an incredible history we've seen you even defend this belt uh against rocky romero at battle of the belts what are you doing going into this match with Will? Like, why do you have a message for Will? Like, how are you handling this pressure going into a match for your title against one of the the biggest stars in all of wrestling right now? Yeah, he's had those matches, but none of them have been against me yet. So, uh, you know, I think it's an opportunity for him to figure himself out. He can be the greatest of all time in his head, and the people can applaud him as much as they want. But when he gets in there with me, it's a whole different experience. And, you know, he's going to have to, you know, dig deep and see what he's really all about. And like I said before, I just think I've been handling it as well as I possibly can. And I've been reminding him every possible time that I can that he is a child. And children make mistakes, especially when the pressure is high. So mm. I think at Double or Nothing, there's an expectation of him to wipe the floor with me, run right through me. And uh, I think I'm going to surprise a lot of people. And I'm going to put him in a, a very vulnerable situation that I don't think he can get out of. So the thing I'm doing is the mental warfare, as they say, all the lead up to the first time that I hit him. 
And he remembers exactly who he's in the ring with. One of the things we talked about, and you guys really got to touch on last week on Dynamite when you had the face-to-face backstage, is the fact that one of the biggest things that has been a factor in nearly all of the major matches that we've talked about from Will Ospreay has been the Tiger Driver 91, um, which is a move he seems to have put aside for now due to, obviously, his concerns about neck injuries, things along those lines, which is something you are very familiar with. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the the strategy of knowing that that's almost a non-factor going into this Sunday and how you plan on taking advantage of that. I mean, I think this is a situation that is a great example. I mean, Will claims to be this changed man, and he's all of a sudden got a heart of gold. He hurt Brian, so when he looked up to and he was like, oh, my God. But, you know, I don't really believe he cares as much that he says he does. I I think he's looking more for the acceptance of the worldwide audience. And I think I'm going to put him in a situation where he's going to have to make a decision. And he knows if he does that, there is the possibility of something happening to me. And we'll see. But I I just think when he's put in that situation, he's going to crumble. Like I said, when we had our face-to-face, he's a fraud. You know what I'm saying? He He's not a changed man overnight. No one is. People can claim to be. And just because you, on paper, have more responsibility, that doesn't mean that you're honestly taking care of them and you, you're doing it the way that you should. So, you know, I, I just think Double or Nothing is going to show a lot about who Will Ospreay really is. I mean, he's as talented as can be. He's a once-in-a-lifetime, literally once-in-a-lifetime performer. And and I'm very excited to get in the ring with him, but I just don't think he's everything he says he is. And I know I'm everything that I say I am. So I'm excited to show that. I mean, we've seen you for years at AEW now just show people how incredible of a wrestler you are, how great on the mic you are, how great of a teammate you are. The Undisputed Kingdom has so much gold right now. I want to talk a little bit, assuming you retain your title on Sunday at the pay-per-view, which, you know, assuming you're on this call right now, so I'm hoping for you. What has this championship meant to you? Because this has actually been your first championship at AEW. Oh, it's meant the world to me. And something that was important to me before I won it, when I knew I was going to win it, was the fact that I was going to make people earn their opportunities to face me. You know, I appreciate what Orange did for a lot of people, but like everything in my career, I had to take the long path. So I'm going to make people take the long path. And you see how often people quit. You know, they're not willing to really sacrifice. They'll say they will, but when they're in that situation, they won't. So, I mean, to me, next to my, you know, my wife and my son, it means everything. I'm just excited for Sunday. Can't get here soon enough. Mm. I am excited for this too. It is going to be the international championship on the line, the defending international champion. Although you got to earn your shot at his, at those defenses, but mm-hmm. the defending AEW International Champion Roderick Strong will defend the title this Sunday at Double or Nothing against Will Ospreay. It's going to be available on traditional pay-per-view. It's on Bleacher Report. It's on PPV.com. It's on Triller. It's on YouTube. If you can catch it, you should catch it live Sunday. Be there in person if you can be. Roddy, thanks for being here. No, thank you for having me. Well, speaking of the International Championship, you know, we just talked about probably the most prolific international champion in Orange Cassidy, but it seems like the international championship isn't exactly a focus of his at the moment because he has been entangled in a battle with former best friend Trent Beretta, and these two are going one-on-one once again here at Double or Nothing. Orange Cassidy, Trent Beretta, best friends collide. You hate to see friends fight, don't you, Aubrey? Right! Right! Especially these friends, like they've been friends for so long. And like, I think that was the thing that that hurt most when Trent finally, finally turned on his best friends, that it's hard to think about Trent Beretta without Chuck Taylor, without Orange Cassidy, without everybody in his crew the whole time. Like I'm following Sue on Twitter and even she's disappointed. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he walked out on her after the match uh, with Matt and Nick. And it's just been kind of crazy to see. This transformation of Trent, this new side of Trent, but at the same time, it's also really exciting to see. I think Trent is a guy that pretty much his entire run in AEW, I think we've all seen the shades of singles potential for him. 
you know, we've seen him have great matches with guys like John Moxley, and he's pretty much been, he's had so many singles opportunities. And after each one, you kind of go, you know, if Trent had a singles run behind him, I think he could go far mm-hmm. to see now, basically, he he has shed Orange Cassidy, he has shed Chuck Taylor, and he's really going off to find who he is as a singles performer. Uh, of course, in order to do that, he's got to go through a man that really solidifies what it means to be a singles performer in AEW, which is Orange Cassidy. It's crazy because if you think about Orange Cassidy, like not much is going on in his mind, but there are very few people that would know how his mind works. And Trent is one of those people. So this is going to be extremely fascinating because I feel like we've seen a lot of Orange Cassidy, especially during his title runs with the international championship. We sort of all know what to expect with Orange Cassidy. And I think Trent has the best understanding of all of what to expect with Orange Cassidy. It's just going to be absolutely crazy to see this match. I think we're going to see a different side of Orange almost rather than just, you know, him coming out fighting a match. There's so much more emotion behind this. And I had no idea that Orange Cassidy was capable of experiencing a lot of emotion, but I feel like this will be the biggest one of all. Now, we did see this match once before, and Orange Cassidy, of course, got the upper hand defeating Trent. Mm -hmm. Um, We also saw these two compete before over the international championship, and that was kind of the first shade of seeing, is this group the right fit for Trent? And now knowing that he's lost to Orange Cassidy twice, and he's got this giant chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. I think, to me, this is the time where Trent has to prove once and for all that not only does he not need Orange Cassidy, but that he can beat Orange Cassidy. It has to be here. Crazy things happen at Double or Nothing. Crazier things happen at AEW pay-per-views. I I think this could honestly go either way, but I feel like there's so much backstory here and so much emotion between these guys and between all of us that have seen these guys at AEW that have seen these guys come from the indies together. I'm really excited for this match. I'm looking forward to seeing it on Sunday. Another match we are looking forward to seeing on Sunday is for a shot, potentially. It is an eliminator match. Yes. We are going to see John Moxley, the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, take on the Don Callis family's prized performer, Kanosuke Takeshita. This sounds insane. Yeah, it, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> yes, there's so much about this that doesn't even compute. Knowing the fact that for those who have followed Takeshita over the years, he has performed all around Japan, Mm -hmm. but not New Japan. Nope. And that is uh, what's very interesting about this opportunity for him, because having not competed in New Japan, but having still made such a name for himself in so many different Japanese promotions, to get the opportunity to possibly challenge for the IWGP Championship and potentially become IWGP champion. To think about Kanosuke Takeshita, a world-renowned Japanese performer, could enter New Japan as the IWGP world champion. That's a crazy notion. But the first thing he's got to do is defeat Jon Moxley here in this Eliminator match at the pay-per-view. Eliminator matches, I always think, are such an interesting prospect because they can always go either way. We've seen them go either way. We've seen Mm -hmm. Pac and Ray Phoenix defeating the Young Bucks uh, when they were the uh, AEW World Tag Team Champions in their first reign and getting the opportunity to challenge for the titles uh, later on. We also saw Britt Baker as AEW Women's World Champion lose to Riho, and that allowed Riho to go on to get her opportunity at the title. We've seen in these Eliminator matches, it can go either way. Mm-hmm. John Moxley has been on a tear as IWGP World Champion, but also he could be burning the candle at both ends, whereas we've seen kind of a red-hot Kanosuke Takeshita who feels like he is just right on the brink of getting his next major opportunity and walking away with a championship. And to do it for the IWGP World Championship could be huge. It's one of those things that you you mentioned how like crazy it is to think about. Takeshita could walk into New Japan as their champion. Like this is the 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 path that we're looking at right now. But at the same time, it's not crazy at all because we've seen Takeshita be this incredible wrestler. He has really come into his own at AEW before the Don Callis family, even more so after joining the Don Callis family. You know, I hate Don Callis as much as the rest of you people, but for who Takeshita is 
and what he represents in wrestling is so absolutely incredible. I love watching this guy. Every time he's on my screen or even time I'm in the ring with him, I'm just like, this guy is so great. He's hard hitting. He's exciting. He's lethal. He is just all these kinds of things. But those are also words that we use to describe John Moxley. He is crazy. He's violent. He's all about just fighting and being ruthless. And I think these two guys with their own individual styles, but that same mindset in wrestling and that same tenacity, this is just going to be an incredible match. An incredible match. Independent of it being an eliminator or a title, whatever, like this match on paper, I'm very, very excited about. Well, what's kind of crazy. So we talk about Takeshita's success since joining the Don Callis family. And I think people truly underestimate how much success he's had. Mm -hmm. Very few people have beaten Takeshita since he joined the Don Callis family. He defeated Kenny Omega. He's defeated Darby Allen earlier this year. Oh. Really, it's just a small handful of guys who have even gotten a victory over Kanosuke Takeshita. Swerve Strickland, our world champion, is one of them. But other than that, it's very few people. Will Ospreay and Swerve Strickland are, are the two major ones. Other than that, though, it's been very difficult to defeat Takeshita. And I think it's going to be an uphill climb for John Moxley. But also John Moxley is John Moxley for a reason. Yep. This is another one of those matches that reminds you of what a great card we have at Double or Nothing. It's it's so good. And I'm so excited we get to do these before the pay-per-view all the time. We've got so many amazing guests, including Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, used the correct names there, uh, our EVP is joining us later in the show. But coming up, first, we're going to talk to you, the woman that is challenging for the AEW Women's Championship. We are going to talk to Serena Deeb. Coming up here on AEW Unrestricted. This is AEW Unrestricted, and we are previewing our huge show this Sunday at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Double or Nothing returns to where it all started. You can watch it live. You better watch it live because if you're there, you know AEW pay-per-views. Like just we we just bring it. AEWTix.com. You can watch it traditional pay-per-view. You can watch it PPV.com, Bleacher Report, Triller.tv, YouTube streaming. It's all over the place. You have no excuse not to watch this show. It's going to be incredible. And I'm excited to talk to our next incredible guest, Miss Serena Deeb, who will be challenging Tony Storm this Sunday for the AEW Women's Championship. How are you doing today, Serena? I'm awesome. How are you guys? Fantastic. Awesome. Serena, this well, is such a huge opportunity for you this is such you know we've seen you competing in AEW. we've seen you on AEW television holding championships but this here this is the aew women's world championship i want to talk a little bit about what this means for you to to get to to challenge tony storm once again for the AEW women's world championship so this is four years in the making i've been at AEW for four years right the og days when we were at daily's place and no crowds and Fast forward to now, everything is, you know, it's the hottest time in our company and everything is is going amazing. The women's division is the hottest it's ever been. MGM Grand is, that's probably one of the coolest places that I will have wrestled after this, this show. But, you know, this isn't just four years. This is almost 20 years in this business. Damn. And I've seen it all. I've been in all the places. I wrestled in all the countries and... Here we are, double or nothing. I wrestled at double or nothing a couple of years ago against Thunder Rosa in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Still one of my favorite matches that I've ever had. Incredible match. I was just thinking about that match, which was well, for the AEW Women's World Championship. It was. And circling back to your question, it is the world championship. So in all of women's wrestling, this is the gold. This is the prize. This is the biggest match of my career. And I love Tony Storm. I love the timeless character and everything that she's doing. And I have a lot of respect for her as a wrestler. But this is four years in the making at AEW, 20 years in the making of my professional wrestling career. This is the moment for me to finally take it. I've been waiting. I've been watching a bunch of other women that on their best day couldn't lace my boots. And this is it. This is the professor era. So what differentiates you between other challengers that Tony Storm has faced in her title run? No one has my experience. Nobody. There's not a woman in this business right now that has my experience that's still actively wrestling. And like I said to you, I've, I've seen it all. 
I've been through all the eras. I've seen the divas eras. I've seen the, the women's revolution. You know, it's like I've witnessed all these things and there's one constant and that's been me. I've been there through all of it and I'm still here. And I guarantee you that this is going to be the best women's match that this company has ever seen. Yeah, that, that's a strong statement, but yeah. it's believable. 100%. <laughs> I believe it. Well, I, I want to talk about the the shift, the change in one Tony Storm. The last time you wrestled for the AEW Women's World Championship was against Tony Storm, but it was a very different Tony Storm we saw. Of course, we saw her transform after losing the world title last year, and she became the Tony Storm we know today, timeless Tony Storm. This Tony Storm is a combination of ruthless and insanity. Yeah. And we witnessed that insanity literally last week on Collision, uh, in which she draped herself in your Deeb's Dojo flag. <laughs> and so I, I want to ask you in general about what you have to plan for differently for somebody like this version of Tony Storm. Yeah, that's a great question. And she, by the way, I'm, I'm going to be auctioning the Deeb's Dojo flag <laughs> that I was, gonna was ask. wrapped around, <laughs> wrapped around Tony Storm's naked body. So stay tuned on that auction. Good call. Yeah, right. I think it's a pretty smart business decision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, what do I have? I, I have to prepare for everything. Look, listen, she's got her people on the outside. Mariah, she's a great wrestler herself. Really enjoyed getting to know her in the ring a couple weeks ago got luther and i don't know he's luther he's crazy <laughs> but you got those two to, to to think about on the outside but here's the thing about tony yeah she's this funny character that everybody loves but at the same time she knows what's at stake in this match and she knows that you know, different than her previous opponents. I'm not joking around. I don't take professional wrestling as a joke. If I remember correctly, and Aubrey, you can correct me if I'm mistaken on this, but when this company started, it was supposed to be a sports-based presentation, mm -hmm. okay? This was the place for professional wrestling. And let's look at this Timeless Tony Storm character. It's the exact opposite of what we said that AEW was going to be. And in four years, I don't know how we've gotten so far off track, but all of this funny gaga, ha ha stuff, listen, this is all elite wrestling. And in my opinion, and I believe a lot of others' opinions as well, if you're looking at it from a sports-based professional wrestling perspective, there is not a better woman in this company to represent than the professor damn yeah wow okay Whew. let me let me just take a second <laughs> to kind of take that in oh boy <laughs> well let's talk about that for a second because of course this is aew this is where the best wrestle mm -hmm. you made your comeback earlier this year and are undefeated that is a fact there is no one that can take that away from serena deeb and you are going into this match undefeated 2024 and this isn't against slouches of opponents we were talking about anna jay we we're talking about mariah may we talked about trisha dora we're talking about the people you've defeated getting to this spot queen amanada as i guess a little bit of a secret as guy who uh works on rankings <laughs> watching you move up the rankings throughout 2024 to see you move into that number one spot as soon as we knew serena deeb was the number one contender it is very true you are the number one woman in all elite wrestling going into this match undefeated and that, to me, feels like the exact representation of everything you were saying. Well, thank you, Will. Just to your point, I, I really appreciate those kind words. Listen, I'm confident. I'm a confident professional wrestler. I'm also a realist, and I can be honest with myself. If I want to call myself the best, I have to be the champion. I cannot call myself the best women's wrestler in this company if I am not AEW Women's World Champion. That's a brutal honesty. You know, that's a fact. Like you said, fact. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So when I become women's world champion this weekend, that's it. Now I can finally wear that title and wear it in truth. Yeah. I mean, there, these were some strong words, but mm, I, no lies detected. I mean, it's... <laughs> 
it's going to be a good match regardless. I think Tony is an incredible wrestler. You're an incredible wrestler. You've got the the pedigree. You've got the background. You've got the experience. You've seen it all. And I'm very excited for this match on Sunday at MGM Grand. Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Serena. Thank you, guys. I love you. Appreciate you. Man, I am so stoked about this. We've already had a chance to talk to two guests uh, so far. We've got another one coming up in Nicholas and Matthew. Join us later today. I have to make sure I keep saying their names right. Otherwise, I, I will screw it up when they're on this call. Anyway, so much more to talk about. I want to talk about the TNT Championship. We have Adam Copeland, current champion, versus Malachi Black in a barbed wire steel cage match, which is insane. I think even more insane is, is to see the caliber of matches that Adam Copeland has been putting on at his current state in his career. So independent of stipulation, independent of it being a title match, I'm excited to see this just because I feel like we're getting a new version of Adam Copeland that we've never gotten before. I have been, and we said it to him here on this podcast, I've been <laughs> so happy watching Adam Copeland do what he does in, in this reign. Seeing him defending the TNT title the way he has been has been incredible. I think it's one of the best reigns that the TNT championship has had. And we're going to be talking about another former TNT champion here in a little bit. But but talking about what Copeland has brought to the table, again, the Cope Open, it's just been so many great match after match after match. So good. And he's reminding us of who he is as a performer. That said, the House of Black have been kind of after Adam Copeland for quite some time here. They defeated Copeland at Dynasty, in which Malachi actually misting Adam Copeland and defeating him at uh, Dynasty kind of proved that he can have Adam Copeland's number when he wants to. And he's been trying to get in his head and uh, encouraging him to concerto Buddy after defeating Buddy. Of course, uh, there was that bloodbath match that uh, Adam Copeland had with Ugh. Brody King. And now here we are at the end of the House of Black. Can Adam Copeland actually run the gamut and defeat all of House of Black? I don't know that he can. I don't know that anybody's been able to. And to do this inside a barbed wire steel cage match. Oh. AEW, I think, has always managed to deliver when it comes to our steel cage matches. And it's a match that we use very, very rarely. You know, going back to the first ever one with Cody and Wardlow, all the way up to... That incredible Escape the Cage match a couple of months ago that also did involve the House of Black. Adam Copeland has a history with steel cages, but he has never stepped foot inside the AEW steel cage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot at stake here. That TNT championship is on the line. I'm very excited for this one. I'm so stoked. So much more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted, including a visit from our EVPs, Matthew and Nicholas. Coming up. We're back on AEW Unrestricted. We've been missing something, I noticed, when we've been doing these preview shows uh, the last couple of pay-per-view cycles. You know, for the longest time, uh, we always had the boss, Tony Khan, here to help preview these shows. And I thought it would be fitting mm. for today's show if we got our current bosses in to help us preview Double or Nothing, uh, especially as we're talking one of the triple main events at Double or Nothing. We're talking about Anarchy in the Arena. And who better to talk Anarchy in the Arena yeah. than two guys who are extremely experienced in Anarchy in the Arena. They are the executive vice presidents of All Elite Wrestling. They are the reigning and defending three-time AEW Tag Team Champions. They are the Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. Great introduction. He got the names right, too. That yep. was really good. I was waiting for you to mess that up. <laughs> <laughs> With respect, too, I, I enjoyed that uh, introduction, and uh, right. we respect you for it. How's uh, Anthony Khan doing, by the way? I haven't uh, heard from him in a little bit. He's he's doing well. He's doing quite well. Good. We wish him the best, of course, as he's on the road to recovery. Yeah, every time I tuck my kids into bed, we say a quick prayer. We say, hey, Tone, thinking about you. Hope you're doing better. Uh, nobody knows what neck injuries are like better than us. I mean, I, I've suffered a bad neck for a very long time. So uh, thoughts and prayers. Yeah, good point. Speaking of uh, points... Man, anarchy in the arena. Wow, that's going to be a great one, huh? That's the second time we're going to be in it. Mm. Uh, last time we we failed to win, but this time uh, 
I think we're going to book ourselves on top. Oh, is is that's what's going to happen here? Okay. I think so. I, I believe it. So I'm a little curious because we recently found out that Eddie Kingston is unable to compete. And then we had mm-hmm. the return of Darby Allen, which was awesome. How do you guys feel about that? And does that change your strategy for anarchy in the arena? Ooh, poor Eddie, huh? Eddie got bit by the injury bug. Right. What bad, what bad timing for that guy. Uh, prayers up for him too, right, Matthew? <laughs> yeah, I've actually included him in my uh, nightly ritual prayer with the kids. And uh, they, they felt bad. They, 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 they like Eddie. I heard that it, it, something maybe with his leg. I don't know how that happened. But, you know, it, it's, it's funny. It's like all these guys, they keep getting banged up and all these uncirc- all, all these terrible things happen. These, like Tony and now Eddie and then even Kenny. Like, it's like one thing after another. And then Darby shows up and it's like, hey, Darby wants in on the fun. So, uh, <laughs> all right, Darby. You know, what's weird is he's uh, gotten bitten by the injury bug as well. And right. I guess he's got a big enough balls to uh, show up even injured, which is pretty crazy. Uh, good luck to him. But uh, I don't think he'll make a difference in the match because uh, we have a we have a good game plan. I think that he didn't, he didn't actually get bit by the injury bug. I think he was hit by the uh, injury bus. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if, if, you, if you saw that. That's a great point. Yeah, poor guy. <laughs> I saw it on TMZ. Yeah. Who do you think leaked the footage, Matthew? Right. The universe is just like, it's out to get the guy. You know what I mean? Like right. a bus? Hey, come on. This is was this Final Destination. Actually, I don't know if there's footage of that, but man, would it be pretty funny to watch. <laughs> we like looking leaking footage, right? So, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, going back to the first Anarchy in the Arena that you two participated in last year, you guys introduced, specifically you, Matt, the Exploding Jordan last year. Mm. That seems like one of those things that would be really, really hard to top. But I imagine this year, with you guys not taking the victory last year, wow. there has to be a major strategy going in this year. Do you guys have any plans to top the Exploding Jordan? That was a great segue. Oh, wow. Oh. Look at what you have there. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's not going to be a Jordan this year, if perhaps we do something so crazy. So for those of you maybe listening in, definitely tune into the YouTube version to see this immaculate, wonderful thing. Yes. Look at this. Look at that. That's so pretty. What an unboxing. Look at this shoe. We're talking about shoes right now. Well, guess what? We have our own signature Reebok pump. Look at that. It's actually beautiful. Do you guys know when that drops? I do. When, when does it drop? It drops on the 27th, the day after the pay-per-view. Whoa. Boom. Boom. Yeah. I'll show you. Look at this. Pump it up. Limited pump, edition. Pump, pump. Campsports.com. We're very excited about this. We always dreamed about having our own Reebok pump when we were kids. I remember being a backyard wrestler and performing in the ring, and I had my own Reebok pump. So now I actually have my very own uh, sneaker. How cool is that? How huh, will? That's extremely cool. Look, I had a pair of Reebok pumps. Actually, I've had them at multiple points in my life. Mm. They will always be one of the coolest shoes you can buy. And the fact that you can now get Young Bucks branded Reebok pumps, Champ Sports limited edition you got to check those out i'm already lining up to answer your question we're going to be wearing those so we're not sure what will happen when we pump them up but who knows oh we're going to wear them for the first time out to the ring at, at anarchy actually Ooh. yep we have something very special uh planned for that night we plan on coming out with a a, a a cool set of gear that maybe matches the sneaker it's it's a big night for us it's a big weekend for us and you know what i'll even give you a little exclusive here if you're going to be in the las vegas area uh you may be able to get your hands on a pair of those sneakers as well i'm not maybe in a couple of days i'll I'll, uh, I'll leak some information i i'm good at doing nice i'm good at leaking things <laughs> you are really good at leaking things <laughs> We're talking anarchy in the arena, and I want to talk a little bit about the people you are bringing in to your team for anarchy in the arena. We've seen Okada join AEW, and you guys go way back, and now he's with you. He's a bit of a jerk. And then we've also seen the return of Jack Perry. So how do you feel that your team is better suited to face Darby and Brian and FTR on Sunday? It's, it's kind of crazy that Aubrey's so confident just calling one of our colleagues a, a jerk like that on All a right. public forum. Like I this. noticed that. That was kind of mean. I'm sorry. I, I'm not calling you jerks. I just want to clarify that. Well, yeah, that's nice. Okada, he's our Japanese brother. He, he's he's basically family. So you're basically calling us jerks when you say that, Aubrey. And I love you to death, but uh, I would, I would, uh, don't be so comfortable. I know we're on your platform, and you know you're comfortable, and we're we're the we're the guests today, right? We're the visitors. Please don't find right? me. Oh no, no, I would never do that. I mean, it just just 
just cool it a little bit, right? Okay. I mean, o- Okada's a superstar. He's 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 so handsome. He, he is handsome. He's got this cool, calm, collect nature about him where, you know, I want that guy on my team. Here's a guy who we've seen wrestle the biggest matches of all time at the Tokyo Dome. He's just out there on his phone. He's sipping a cup of coffee. He could probably take a nap. I've seen him yawn before wrestling Kenny Omega. Like, that's how cool. That's a guy I want on my team. A guy that yep. the best in-ring performer of all time the best big match performer of all time and then, and then we got this we got the scapegoat we got jack perry uh you know the hottest wrestler in the world right now this guy he's a ball of energy he surprises me every week he's coming up with things on the fly and i'm just i i'm like a proud dad watching this kid i'm just so happy you know to see that he's found himself found this new edge got more aggressive got meaner got angrier and i think we're going to help bring out uh even even more than him in a match like anarchy i love it and honestly i don't stand with uh my best friend here aubrey edwards on okada i think he's a sweetheart and i think he's a genuine superstar right. and we have all the metrics to prove that that's actually a shoot uh but good stuff will yes he does his research thank you model employee <laughs> I, do. Mm, I like that But either way, we've got Anarchy in the Arena. It's literally this Sunday. It is where it all started. MGM Grand, double or nothing. Uh, True story here. These two are three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions. Haven't missed a double or nothing. Yeah. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, only missed one pay-per-view total, which was... Just one. Just one. Mm -hmm. World's End last year. Yep. But otherwise... Historically, big part of Double or Nothing, no strangers to the main event of Double or Nothing, no strangers to whether it's Stadium Stampede, whether it's Anarchy in the Arena, you guys are no strangers to getting it done at Double or Nothing. And I am so looking forward to seeing you guys, not just in the ring, but all over the building, MGM Grand Garden Arena. Can't miss it. Oh, it's a big night. Yep. It's a big night, Will. I mean, five years ago, we, we stood on that stage and we welcomed everybody to the first Double or Nothing, you know, a, a show name that we created, actually, just to see how far AEW has com- come, how, how much we've grown in, in those five years. It's amazing. And I think a lot of people take it for granted. This is unprecedented. What what one company, a baby company like AEW has done and in half a decade it blows my mind i sometimes i i have to sit back and go wow and take it all in because you know as in this business we go from town to town from show to show and we don't get a chance to really smell the roses and enjoy it take it all in right and uh yep. this is huge i think one day when we're all retired and we're all old and we're going to look back and go we're finally gonna be able to go wow and to think that me and nicholas did it all on our own that's really really humbling and really cool. You know, it makes me very happy. Yep. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. Thank you so much for being here today, Matthew and Nicholas. Thank you for not finding me. No. Mm-hmm. I retract my comments about Okada. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm excited to see you guys tear it up this Sunday at Double or Nothing. Hey, just a couple quick notes before we leave. Sure. This is a great show. You guys are really killing it. Uh, I, I, I'm a regular. I tune in every episode. Thank you. Have you considered, Aubrey? I've, I've kind of said this to a few people backstage. Have you considered smiling a little bit more and then will love you to death have you considered talking a little less but that's it otherwise this show is great you guys are killing it yep. big laughs every time i listen yeah great interview great questions i love you guys let's have a great show thanks thanks appreciate it awesome let's keep that energy up guys appreciate the Thank feedback you. boys yeah keep it up keep up the energy and we'll see you at the pay-per-view yep well then I don't why know. did I, I why, why did you feedback. invite them here? Like <laughs> I, I, I can live with that feedback. Maybe I can talk a little bit less. <sighs> sure, you speak for yourself, sir, or don't I, because I, maybe you should talk less. Yeah, may, maybe, maybe. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> we've got the AEW World Championship. Speaking of people who have had problems with Matthew and Nicholas, oh my god, and uh, our World Champion Swerve Strickland, who may have referred to the actions of Matthew Nicholas as a, uh, I just need to check my notes here, a bitch move. That's a direct <laughs> quote, Matt and Nick. Uh, Matthew and Nicholas, excuse me. Uh, but either way, our world champion having his first pay-per-view title defense after winning the title at Dynasty from Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland's going to be defending the AEW World Championship against a man he's been quite familiar with and a man that's been bringing up a lot of Swerve's past demons, Christian Cage. Christian Cage, of course, being named the challenger at Double or Nothing by Matthew and Nicholas due to Swerve's words. And 
you know, Christian Cage, I think, like, look, I am a big Christian Cage fan. I've talked about this for many, many years. I've always said Christian Cage, one of, I thought, one of the most underrated performers in professional wrestling history. And really these last couple of years, he's reminded people of why that's true. And he's almost reached a point where he can remove the underrated tag from his career because this is a guy who's gotten to prove a lot. And in AEW, he's... Uh, accomplished so much, you know, and he's a multi-time TNT champion. Uh, one of those reigns wasn't exactly his, oh. but, at the, but at the same oh, time. Oh, you reminded me it was a multi-reign, and then I just remembered the, oh, man. Yeah, oh. I mean, there was a few months where he was carrying it, and it wasn't exactly his. But uh, either way, he's a multi-time TNT champion, and I think really brought a lot to that championship. But after losing that championship, it was very clear that his destination was the tippy top of the wrestling industry. And that is the AEW world championship. And that belt is currently held by our current reigning and defending AEW world champion, Swerve Strickland. You know, Swerve turned a new leaf mm -hmm. back in March. And, you know, he, he really decided to take some new steps for who he is as a person when he challenged for the title back at Revolution. And, you know, there was the moment where Prince Nana handed him the crown and he mm -hmm. threw it back. And, you know, he's really embraced the fans who have been cheering him a very long time, but he's decided to really be that hero to them that they've wanted him to be. But it feels like all of those actions that Swerve committed over the time that he was not so much a fan favorite are coming back to bite him, including yep. having attacked Nick Wayne back in his, I wanted to say home, but it was actually uh, the Buddy Wayne Academy. Kind of his home. It's where Nick yeah, Wayne was it's, raised. It's basically in where that he was wrestling raised. Ring. <laughs> yeah, and in that ring. And uh, those actions have come back to bite him. He teamed with Christian Cage just last summer at All In, in which they teamed up against Sting and Darby in the coffin match. And again, Christian and Swerve really got to know each other at that point. Swerve lost that match, and it's very clear that Christian has held on to that all of this time. And to finally get to target Swerve, there's so much history in this match that almost the moment Christian came out to challenge Swerve Strickland, everything was brought up all at once. It was like, hey, you attacked my son. Also, we teamed like last year, and you lost that match. And again, it's just so much of Swerve's actions coming back to bite him. He had the Mogul Embassy turn their backs on him. He has got his back against the wall defending this world championship. But that's also exactly where he thrives. Right. Yeah, no, we've seen Swerve be almost up against more than this before. And every time he has come out and he has put on stellar matches, he's a great wrestler. He's great on the microphone. There's, there's a reason people cheer for him the way that they do. Like they believe in swerve. And admittedly he says, you know, I, I did all these terrible things, which, you know, maybe if you're going to do something terrible, you should remember because it might bite you in the ass. Karma's a bitch, dude. Sorry. But <laughs> he being someone who has admitted his wrongdoings and having learned from his mistakes, I am very proud to have Swerve Strickland as my champion. Like, and for him to, you know, have this historic run being the first African-American world champion at AEW, it's just so good to see him in this spot. At the same time, Christian is one of the biggest jerks that I think I have ever seen on my screen. It's one of those times where every time his music hits, I'm just groaning on the inside. Like, you could, you know, my, my eyes are rolling so hard that you could hear them. <laughs> you you could hear it in that arena, honestly, when they when the announcement was made in Winnipeg. People hated it. <laughs> you could hear it in the arena when the Bucks, of course, dropped the hints that it could it possibly be Kenny, and then no, it was absolutely nope. not. When the music hit that it was Christian Cage, uh, you could feel the kind of wash over the building of, <sighs> all right, here we go. And, yeah, here but we I go. think the thing that people recognize with Christian Cage, despite the fact that he gets under everybody's skin, despite the fact that he knows how to rile people up, he can make you angry. You better not have a dead father because <laughs> he'll come right after you. But the one thing he has going for him is everybody respects what he does between those ropes. And that is where he is the most dangerous. And he has one thing left to accomplish here in AEW, and that is winning the AEW World Championship. And it's going to be quite 
a battle for Swerve Strickland to take on not just Christian Cage, but a man who's got the entire patriarchy behind him. It's all oh man. This this match is going to be insane. I, I I'm a broken record on these every time we talk about how great our matches are on pay per views, but like I think at this point we're five years in. Everyone knows that the pay per views are the place to watch. And like if if you're not watching this pay per view live, awtix.com, be sure you watch it. Payperview.com. Triller.tv, YouTube, Bleacher Report. You can watch it in all kinds of different places. Definitely tune in. We're still much more to talk about, including like the match that I am so, so excited about. Oh my God, we are going to talk about the TBS championship. The TBS title is on the line yes. as the reigning and defending champion, Willow Nightingale, defends Yay. the title against Mercedes Monet making her in ring debut in AEW. What bigger place to make your in ring debut than in a championship match on one of the biggest shows AEW puts on every year? Everybody has been anticipating what Mercedes Monet is going to bring to the ring. That's really the thing she does best. And to know that she gets to do this on this stage for this championship against this champion. And you know, it's funny. I was there. I was there a year ago. You were there when it happened? I was there a year ago. Oh. I went out to Long Beach. I don't think it's any secret that uh, Willow Nightingale is a dear friend of mine. And I went out to support her. And she walked out of that night, the New Japan Strong Women's Champion, the first ever. And I remember how distraught she was that night. Because it's one thing to walk away with a championship. And that is the goal of professional wrestling, mm -hmm. but you never want to do it at the expense of someone's career. And to know that Mercedes Monet walked out of that match, or excuse me. Didn't in, walk out of that match. In, in Willow's own words, didn't walk out of that match. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, she's talked about it's always put kind of an asterisk on that reign. And here we are, come full circle. Willow Nightingale became the new TBS champion. And Mercedes Monet is now in AEW and the first match that Mercedes gets to have is against the last opponent she had in the ring. I'm so thrilled that this match is even happening. To see Willow and all of her growth in the time she's been at AEW, like it was inevitable she was going to win a title at one point or another. But to have this title and to have her win it against a, an incredible champion in Julia Hart, I think all of us were very, very excited to see her win that gold, finally. At the same time, all of us are extremely excited to see Mercedes Monet at AEW and to see a healthy Mercedes Monet when there was a chance she was never going to wrestle again. And now she's competing for gold at a pay-per-view. This is insane. I remember way back before I was ever in wrestling, flying to wrestling shows to see her wrestle because of everything she's done in the business and the, the change maker she's been, the holes and ceilings she has punched in women's wrestling. So she means a lot. I'm sure she means a lot to Willow. So to see this match happen, there's the, the emotion of seeing these two performers grow independently. There's the idea that Willow is this homegrown talent at AEW. There's the story of the injury and how this has been happening. It's just, there's so much in this match I'm just waiting for that moment for the bell to ring. Oh, for sure. And I, I'm so excited for that because, as I mentioned, I'm a big fan, big supporter of everything Willow does. Um, but at the same time, I've also been a big fan of Mercedes for a mm -hmm. very long time. I've watched her entire career. And to see her at this stage, see her here, and to see the possibility of her becoming the AEW TBS champion in her first match to walk away with gold in her first match in AEW. That's an exciting possibility. But I think Willow did not come this far to have it end in such a short amount of time. She did not fight to get to the TBS championship and to win the TBS championship and to have the celebration she's had and to get to do it with her friends, to get to do this with Stokely, to get to do this with Chris Statlander, to have it end at the very next pay-per-view. That's not what Willow Nightingale's, that's not her MO, that's not nope. uh, who she is as a champion. And she is going to fight to keep this thing. This is such an unpredictable scenario that I think whatever happens, the biggest winners are gonna be the people in the building. At, Damn right. Yes, at the MGM Grand. I'm so excited for this. I hope you're all excited for this. I hope you're all excited for this show. Uh, because again, 
it's double or nothing. It's the five year anniversary of the very first AEW show. You want to be here for this show. If you're not in the Las Vegas area or not traveling to Las Vegas, whatever, and definitely if you are, AEWTix.com, get your tickets right now. But otherwise, you can check the show out on Bleacher Report. You can check the show out on PPV.com, Triller.tv. You can check us out on YouTube. And of course, traditional pay-per-view as well. Aubrey, are you ready? I, I don't think I'm ready, but somehow we'll we'll make it through. We'll make it through. I'm so excited. We have the anniversary of the show that changed all of our lives happening in the building that changed our lives. This is just going to be such a monumentous night. I'm so stoked. Thank you so much for listening to this preview of Double or Nothing this Sunday at MGM Grand. I am Aubrey Edwards, along with my best friend, Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. See you in Vegas. See you in Vegas. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted.